All right, so here we go with our next instructional video, which is related to um, the practice exam for Access Chapter 1. And, you know, if this was a typical class, you would be pulling me aside and asking questions. How do I do this? Or you're going in and using our old friend Denise to um, determine what kind of assistance you need. But I thought I would just provide this um, support to, for you to review in case you have any specific questions about the practice exam and the various tasks you see on that. So I'm in student view right now. I'm going to open up the SC Practice Access Chapter 1 practice exam. And I would just suggest that if, if I get going too fast here, um, just pause the video and uh, replay it back to um, the question you are working on. And um, again, if my um, explanation is not adequate, then you could um, ask me a question or whatever on that. All right. So here we go. First of all, it says create a new database from the student's template. Name the new, da new database students and save it in the default folder location. So here we have, like I mentioned in the presentation that I did previously, um, blank database is 90% of the time what you're going to be doing in Access, but they do have these templates out here that you can utilize to create default databases with already built-in tables and things like that. So in this case, they're saying, hey, let's use one of those previously defined tables um, that Access provides to start a database. So in this case, I'm going to go down. I could, If I had a whole bunch of templates, I could search for them up here. But I'm just going to scroll down and find, oh, well, there's a student's template. Again, a template being something you, you, that you reuse over and over again. And I click on that. And it says, what's that going to be called? Well, I'm going to call it students. And it says to save it in the default folder location, which is already defined for me. So here again, I'm creating a table that already exists in template form. Click Create. And we're good to go. That's question one. Next, view the participants table in design view. Again, design view is the structure or the framing of the table. And um, you notice there's no option up here to select design view. And I'm paying attention to my objects down here, which is participants. So to open that in design view, I would just simply right click and say design view is how I want to open up the participants table. And it would open it up so it brings me a list of field names that I'm working with. Next question. In the table design view, of the workshops, workshops ch table, change the field size property of the workshop type field to 45. Here you need to pay attention to which field you're working with. Obviously, I'm going to click on the second field, with this, which is workshop type. Right now, that shows a field size of 50. I'm going to run my mouse pointer through that and call that 45 to change the width of that field. And it says, then save the table. I'm just going to go up to my click access, quick access toolbar, hit save. And it says, do you want to continue anyway? Yes. <clears throat> Question four. Here we are just doing some data entry. We're creating a new record. And I'm going to go to the last, this blank line down here at the bottom. I'm, right now I'm in data sheet view, which is where you enter your data. I'm going to go to that very last record at the end down here and just start typing in data. So my workshop ID is 12 KT. I have um, workshop type of kitchen, workshop name, making the most of small spaces. And again, if you're a slow typer, you might want to pause me here while you can type that in. I'm just hitting tab between each field here as I'm entering information into this record. Cost per person 10. Now I just have to put 10 there. I don't have to put dollar sign, 10.00, whatever, just 10. I'm going to move this out of the way here so we can see what's going on here. <coughs> Hit tab. Actually, let's go over here. 
uh, max capacity 50 and workshop date 7, 10, 17, dividing that by slash forward slashes and I'm going to hit tab and it records the record. <coughs> Next, open the workshops form in form view. And again, make sure you know what you're, what you're dealing with here. I've got the form down here called workshops. And pretty much all I have to do to open that in form view is just double click on it. And it should automatically open in form view, which is the default. All right. Next, we're wanting to delete a record from the workshops table. And it looks like we're deleting the one with workshops ID 10-BT. So I'm going to go down here and click on the row selector, which is over here on the far left, for that particular record, 10-BT. Hit my delete key. <coughs> Do you want to delete it? Yes. All right. Move to the first record in the participant's entry form. Right now it looks like I'm on record 13 of 21 on this form. Again, we use the form to bring up information one record at a time. If I want to go to the first record, all I have to do is just click on this button over here for first record on the form navigation, and it'll take me back to the first record in that form. Here I am in, it looks like, data sheet view. <coughs> And I could either click on the next record, I believe, down below here, or I could just click on this right arrow, whether I was in data sheet view or form view. And if I just hit the next record arrow, it'll take me to the next record in the participants table. So here it's saying to set the ID field, again, paying attention to my field structure. I'm going to go click on my ID field. And it says set it as the primary key. And I'm just going to go up here and click on the little primary key button. And when I do that, this may, this may go by really fast. But over here in my row selector, it'll be a little key will appear next to ID. So I click on primary key. And the little key just appeared. See right there? Okay. Again, <coughs> stop the video. Slow down, whatever, if you want to stop it or replay it or whatever as I go along. In design view of the workshops table, change the cost per person field, which is down here, to a currency data type. That would be with dollar signs. So over here in my data type, instead of number, I'm going to click on my selector, drop down arrow, and change it from number to currency. Here it says change the field name of the workshop type field. So here I'm actually editing a field name, workshop type field, and I want to change it from workshop type to workshop subject. I'm just going to backspace, one, two, three, four, and capital S, subject, no space. Change the field name on the fly here and hit enter. <coughs> Here I am in design view of the workshops table. It says add a field named veteran with a yes, no field data type. So at the very end of my design view after workshop date, I'm going to say veteran tab. I'm going to specify this as a yes, no field type. So all I would be able to do is just say, is it yet, are they a veteran? Yes. Or are they a veteran? No. I wouldn't be able to enter anything else and hit enter. Create a new table in design view. So here I want to go up to create table design. <coughs> Excuse me. We will be doing this a lot. Create table design. My first field name is location ID tab. It is auto number, and I'm just going to use my selector here. An auto number means it's automatically going to add one every time I add a record. Auto number. And I'm going to click down below. I could hit tab here a couple times, or I can just click down below. Call the next field location name. 
short text. And those are the two fields that are going to be in my table. Save the table with the name locations and do not set a primary key field. So I'm just going to go up here and click on my save button on my quick access toolbar. I'm going to call this locations. And I do not want to set a primary key at this time. Otherwise, access will create one for me. and I don't want it to do that. So I'm going to just say no. Next, create a new select query using the simple query wizard based on the nickname, last name, and workshop ID fields in the participants table. So here I'm going to go up to my create, and I'm going to use the query wizard. Later on, I think in chapter two, we will use query design quite a bit. But here we're doing query wizard. We're doing a simple query. And I want to add the, I'm going to go down here and click on nickname hit the single right pointer to drop it into my selected fields. Double check always again, making sure you know what your source data is, the participants table. I want to add last name, click on last name, add it to your selected fields. And then workshop ID, add it to your selected fields. So there's three fields in my query, hit next. We're going to show this as a detail when we're done. And instead of participants query, I'm just going to run my mouse pointer through that. <coughs> Excuse me, and call this name, capital L, list. One phrase. Open the new query in datasheet view. Click finish. And it'll open up your query like so. Use a form tool to create a form based on the participants table. So I want to make sure the participants table over here in my task pane is selected, not open, just click on it once to select it. Then I'm going to say create and form. And it's just going to create a default form for the participants table. With the workshops form in layout view, switch to form view. So I'm just going to go over here to my various view options for forms and change it to form view which is essentially like the final version of your form. Create a new report using the report wizard based on all of the fields in the alpha list of customers query. So again, pay attention to what your source data is. Down here in my queries, alpha list of customers. I'm going to say create and report wizard. And it says um, I'm going to base it on all fields. So I'm going to click on the double arrow to add all the fields over there. Click Next. No grouping. Click Next. No sorting. <coughs> Excuse me. Next, um, it says tabular form and portrait, which is the defaults. Hit Next. And it says I'm going to call this report customer space list. So I'm going to run my mouse pointer through the default name of my report and call this customer space list. And open this in print preview, which would be the default preview the report and finish. In the workshop attendance report, which I'm already on down here, switch to report design view. So here I could just right click and say design view. We're going to get into some stuff here, I think, in chapter three, where we mess around a little bit with reports and design view. Once again, workshop attendance reports, switch to report view. See, can I right click on this and say report view? Um, I can probably just right click and just open would be the default. That will open it up in report view, or I could change the view up here probably as well. I'm just going to right click and just say open. Oh, that didn't work. Well, what a deal. All right. So let's, that was not a bad example, or that was a bad example. So workshop attendance, I'm going to click on this drop down arrow and I'm going to say open that in report view. I guess what I actually did on that last attempt was it by default, it opened it in print preview and I didn't want to do that. So I'm going to just go up here and select report view, and there we go. Yes, I can make mistakes, can't I? 
Yes. View the workshop's attendance report in print preview mode. This is the one where I can just click on workshop attendance down here. Let's see if I'm right here. I was going to right click and say open. Let's see if the default is print preview like I tried to do last time. Yes. Now what? Didn't like that. Hmm, I'm going to go up here and say print preview mode. There we go. I'm learning something all the time right along with you. Compact and comp repair the construction workshops. Again, compact and repair kind of puts Humpty Dumpty back together again when all the pieces of your database kind of get scattered across your hard drive. So I'm going to go up here to my file, also known as, you remember, Backstage View? Yep. I'm going to just select Compact and Repair, and there you go. Back up the Construction Workers Database, the default folder locations. This is where you're saving a backup file. Once again, I'm going to go to Backstage View, File, Save As. And here I need to be very careful to say I actually want to do back up the database, tell it what I'm doing, and save as. And the default is the name of your database with the date stamp on it, which in this case is March 25th, which is actually a few days from now. All right. And I'm going to just hit save. And that is the default location and name. Rename the workshop's report. So again, paying attention to which object I'm working on. I'm going to go down here and click on workshops. Actually, I'm going to right click on that and say rename. I'm going to click right after the word workshop and say workshop attendance and hit enter. Okay, so I made one mistake, didn't I? So it showed that I'm human. I did get 100% on that, and I hope that was helpful for you in um, working through the practice exam for Access Chapter 1. In my next video, I'll be working on the Chapter 1 project with you. Thank you for watching.